Good morning. Welcome back to Alan's Allotment. It's the 8th of October 2022 and it's Saturday. And I'm pleased to say that the work that we've done earlier in the week when we came up on Monday and fastened down a few things, that the polytunnels have fared pretty well. Moving on, we've also got over 300 litres of water in that IBC since we set it two weeks ago. And as you can see, the raspberries that we planted are now looking rather good. And no yellowing, no dead leaves. They've really got established and put the feet in the ground now. So we'll hopefully get some raspberries next year from them. Right, so I'm in the treehouse. And as you know, we took down the shade cloth because winter's coming now and we want as much light at these plants as we can. They're now established. The shade cloth was because when you transplant plants, shading them out helps with the transplant shock. But they're established now, so basically what we're going to do. So I've just had a general look around at the plants now. And although this one, if you remember back in one of the other videos, this had one leaf left, which was this one here. And it's put all this on since we replanted it and washed the roots. This one here behind me is a mandarin. And this one only has one leaf on it. But it is still trying to flower. And it's still very much alive. Now, I noticed when I came in today, we've got a little bit of insect damage on the citrus trees as well now. And I think it's fungus gnats that's come out of the compost. Uh, I tried to keep the, the top surface of the bed as dry. Well, I tried to keep them. I don't water these very much at all. Citrus trees don't like a lot of water. And they will go down now and find the moisture in the soil below this bed. But you can see the... You can possibly see the leaves are now starting to turn pale, yet they were lovely and lush. Some are faring better than others. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to feed these plants because this compost, as I say, was just cheap compost out of Aldi. I have had good success with it with other plants, but there's obviously not enough nutrients in this for these plants. They are greedy feeders, are citrus trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them some Epsom salts. Just a tablespoonful and I'm going to feed them. Now Epsom salt, um, which is basically magnesium sulfate, it's a fantastic product. It helps to promote more flowers on the, uh, it helps to promote more flowers on the plant. It increases the chlorophyll, which is why these are going pale. That's the chlorophyll in the leaf. Um, and what's more, it's also said to have some beneficial properties against slugs and voles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed each of these plants. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can, you can also give them Epsom salts, one tablespoon in a full gallon of water, and then just spray the leaves. And that's the quickest way they can take this up. And I'm not, but I'm not going to do that for another two weeks. So what I'm going to do is feed the soil so the roots can take it up slowly and see if we get an improvement on this. I've also sprayed these down now. Uh, I don't really like using insecticides, but it's just a general purpose DOF universal bug control to try and get on top of the aphids or fungus gnats before they actually get established. So I'm now just going to feed each one of these trees with the Epsom salts. And as you can see, I've got enough heat to last a lifetime. I didn't realize I was going to get that much when I ordered it. But it does have a lot of beneficial properties. And they are shallow feeders, uh, citrus trees, so they keep the roots fairly up near the top. They will go down if they're given the choice to go into a bed, obviously. Uh, but until they get down into that bed, the shallow feeding. So we're going to give them a little surface dressing like that. And we're just going to rub it in like so. 
and then they're going to get the tiniest little drop of water just to wet it out and start it dissolving into the soil to start feeding the plants. Right, so that's it. You'll see, we'll give them all a little drop of water. It's literally just a little sprinkle, just to soften the um, Epsom salts to make them start dissolving into the ground. And we've done every plant with just a little tiny drop of water on. That looks bone dry already, but these do like it dry, but it has had a little water. And we've done all of the citrus trees, all of the peaches, We've even done the fig, mandarin at the back. We haven't done the blueberries yet. It's a bit awkward trying to get in with these other citrus trees that I got last week in the path and in the way. But we've got this one done. But this is what I was meaning about. Um, so you can see, possibly, there's a lot of spider webbing in there. And it could be spider mite, or it could be actually spiders moving in to take over. However... I've sprayed the entire tree now and you can see we're starting to get some black mold which is usually sig signifies aphids although I can't, I can't actually see any aphids on the on the leaves no oh, yes I can I can now there they are they're aphids so these have all been sprayed on the leaves that's another reason why I didn't do the foliar spray, spray with the uh, Epsom salts so we'll come back in a couple of days and we'll spray these again, try and get them under control and then we can clean the leaves up and we'll feed them from the bottom at the moment. Right, so um, I'm not sure whether or not you can see. I've got a bit of a bruising in the eye. Um, I'm not sure if it's going out on the video, but just to let you know, it's okay, I haven't been fighting and Mrs C hasn't beat me up. Um, I often come out in bruises on me. I bruise very easily, basically. And, the, and yesterday, I was just rubbing my eye. And, it bru and I didn't even know until um, Mrs C said, you've got a big bruise under your eye. What's happened? And I went and looked in the mirror, and I'd been rubbing my eye a bit hard, and I basically bruised it. Now, you can believe that whether you want to or not, but that is the truth. Regarding the pesticide that I'm using on the citrus trees, I need to get it under control. Now... I don't like using pesticides, and most people don't. However, there are times when it's needed just to nip it in the bud and try and get on top of it very, very quickly. But this particular one is also says you can harvest the same day that you spray. Just give it a wash. And uh, we can only take the word for that, can't we, guys? But I think it's basically just a liquid soap type solution. And it was on hand, uh, so I've used it, basically and hopefully it'll do the job. Right, so we've just been busy having a little bit of a potter. So I've now planted up these three surplus autumn broccoli into bigger pots for my brother. And then these are the primal cabbages coming along. I've now transplanted all of the snowball cauliflowers and there's three left. You can't really see. There's three there's three spears back ups in a little pot there. So we've planted the lot. We've got 23 in total out of that. Then in here, I've potted up some lettuce and there are my back ups, just in case. You don't need a lot of lettuce. And they are cold weather crops. So they'll do fine either outside or even in the polytunnel. Then we've got the dwarf kale. I just planted everything up into that cell, that little small cell there, because you don't need a lot of those to get a good harvest either, so my brother can have some of those. And then in here, we've got some shop-bought garlic that was starting to sprout, and these are only tiny, tiny little cloves. So we're doing a bit of an experiment, and this is in seaweed compost. Then we've got shop-bought garlic again, small in seaweed compost then we've got large shop board garlic in feed free compost and then shop, uh, shop garlic again large cloves in seaweed i decided i would start doing modules this year after all because i'm not quite ready with those two beds 
So um, I'll start those in modules and they're just a test with some shop bought garlic that was starting to go to seed. Right, so we're here in the uh, dry area and we're just going to start potting up or growing on some runners. So here's one I've cut off the parent plant. Now I've seen this little tip on a um, YouTube channel called The Ripe Tomato Garden. If I remember, I'll leave you a link down in the description. So basically what we've done is we've cut it off from the mother plant completely. And what you do is you leave a little bit of the runner stalk on the strawberry plant and then nip it off. Now, I'm in a real awkward angle here, so I can't really see how well this is coming out. But basically, that's a little bit of stalk we've left. And what you do is you use this as an anchor to hold it in place while the roots take place. So I'm going to try and do it where you can see it. So what I'm going to do is just snip off one or two leaves so we can hopefully see this a little bit better. And you use this anchor here and you basically you put it in to the compost like that and you sit the strawberry runner just on the surface. And you obviously have to keep on top of the moisture, but you don't want to over wet these. Strawberries don't like being saturated, but they do like moist, especially when they're getting established. So let's just do another one. We've got another one here, look. There's a couple on this one. I'll probably take them both. And if any of these have runners on like that one, and then basically you cut the extra runner off as well, because it's a little plant trying to also put out a runner. So we'll take off the extra runner to start with and then we'll leave a little bit on the plant again like we have here. We we'll remove the smallest of the leaves and anything that might touch the compost. So you're basically left with something like that. And we're going to just slide this into the compost like we did with that one. Now these have already been soaked and there's plenty of moisture in here. So we're just going to stick that into there so that the root of the strawberry is literally just touching the compost. If you bury the root, most people know they will die. They'll just rot back and die. Um, by the way, I apologise to Terry, uh, Terry King at Allotment Gardening on a Budget. I forgot to put his link in my last video, but if you go back and look in the comments section, you will see that there is now a link in the comments section to Terry's channel. Uh, if you pop over there to have a, a look at his channel, tell him Alan sent you. Uh, you. If you haven't already heard of Terry, you will really be surprised. Um, I've learned so much from Terry and a lot of other YouTube gardeners and I will be giving a mention to a lot of them very soon, perhaps in the next video. Right, as you can see, they all look a bit sad at the moment. And what you'll notice as well is they're all leaning over in whichever way I put the runner stalk in. Technically speaking though, once those roots start to come out and feed the way into the compost, these strawberries will straighten themselves up. The crown will stay put and the leaves will come up to the light. And these are um, two, four, six, seven of the mother plants. I've cut a load of foliage off them and basically uprooted them and put them into pots, leave them in here over winter. Now these are approaching three year, now, three year old next year. But I've potted them on just in case none of these make it. We should get a percentage. Can't guarantee they'll all germinate, but 
if we get a few that's a good start we can keep the uh, the breed going so we might end up with a few surplus as well but if we do i'm sure my brother will make some use of that or if anybody else would like any just let me know in the comments below but let's see how they take first so that's the mother plants there's seven little plants there and then we've got four eight twelve sixteen runners we've took off and we'll see how they do we don't need millions because as i say i have some coming from terry king next week and uh, the variety is called sweetheart and they looked absolutely amazing so thank you very much again terry much appreciated my friend and uh, we look forward to getting those potted up right so with the exception of um one lot of garlic this is the uh, the compost we've used that's the brand this isn't an advertisement by the way i bought these early in the season for when i was potting on or planting late in winter that's the brand premium seaweed multi-purpose compost so it's got added seaweed it isn't seaweed so uh, we've got the strawberries in that and we've got all of those with the exception of one cell of uh, the peat free one uh, everything else is in the seaweed compost so let's see how it performs Right, it's that time of day again. I've had a thoroughly enjoyed myself just having a little potter potting plants on, tending to the trees in the treehouse, doing a few little odd jobs around the allotment. I really do appreciate you all popping along and keeping an eye on the progress of how things are going. It really is much appreciated. It's at this point, I know I'm going to do a, a, a channel, uh, sorry, I'm going to do a a video where I actually it's probably going to be the next one I do maybe tomorrow just rhyming off all the people who I watch on YouTube and putting links in the description below for you to pop over and take a look if you haven't already seen these individuals but there's two in particular I want to mention right now and one is Ollie Rusty Garden Rusty Gardener Rusty Gardener, Rusty Gardener. You can have a good laugh at that one, Ollie. And these are budding YouTube uh, enthusiasts and they're just sort of getting off the ground. And I'd really appreciate it if you could pop over and have a look at Ollie's channel. I will leave it a link in the description below. She's uh, quite a character, is Ollie. And um, she's over in Canada. And the wildlife over there is absolutely fantastic. I love seeing the wildlife, the hummingbirds and the deer and all the wildlife they have over there it's absolutely brilliant it might be a, a channel you might want to pop over there tell her tell her that alan sent you and i said hi and the next individual is nick the gardener now nick has commented i think on every single video of mine since finding the channel and i really do appreciate nick taking his time um, to leave his comments he's also another budding, budding youtube gardener um, and i'm sure you may find that if you pop over and take a look at the content you can boost up the subscriptions and i would really appreciate that and i'm sure they would as well so um, that pretty much brings us to another exciting episode of alan's allotment as always guys wherever you are in the world Please stay safe, be practical, keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.